We are The God Culture, a group of independent researchers with no affiliation to any denomination nor organization whatsoever. We read the word and we test it as 1 Thessalonians 5.21 tells us, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. And man, it is good to be in his presence in all things, all things. The time has come that we all understand this highly debated topic of the Sabbath, and let's settle the debate with Scripture. We really already have. Now, here we go. It's time for Paul. In fact, there is so much overwhelming detail on Paul and the law and the Sabbath that we decided to break out an entire series titled, Did Paul Say That? There, we will take a comprehensive look at the books Paul wrote in full chapters and context much of the time, because we don't want to bog this series down with all of those videos doubling the series just on Paul. But it deserves its own series. And these are questions many people are asking. Some are even abolishing Paul because they know what the Bible says about the Sabbath and the law. And then they see fragments from Paul that seem to say otherwise. Let's see whether they do or they do not. Watch, did Paul say that? Now, did Paul actually say not to keep the Sabbath? Haven't found that in Scripture, not yet. Not me, not any of the guys in the group. No one that we know of has ever found such a Scripture. It does not exist. Most certainly, it definitely does not in context when you read in context. Only in fragments can one arrive at such, and it's false. It's a false paradigm. Why? Well, it's just not there. In this video, we will cover did Paul and the apostles keep the Sabbath, and then we'll continue through in the Sabbath series to the next topic, allowing the new series, What Did Paul Say? Answer all those challenges and questions in full rather than a point, counterpoint, useless debate here. We're not going to do that in the Sabbath series. We're going to do it elsewise. But it's coming right on the heels of this. We're already working on several. This is research that was already a part of the Sabbath series. We're just spinning it off into a new series. That's all. So it has a home for itself, and people can just find that, even if they're not looking for Sabbath teachings, but they specifically want to know about Paul. Why? Well, Paul is a highly debated topic right now as well, because there are those, uh, you know, first you have the church, and the church looks at Paul and they say, well, this fragment, 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 all say that Paul abolishes the law and says that we don't have to keep it anymore. We have liberty after all. What is liberty? Liberty would be the law of Isis. Yeah, you know who that is? The ancient goddess. She is the goddess of liberty, all right? Oh, yeah, she is. And in that liberty, it will lead you in the wrong place. That doctrine does not come from Scripture, ever. See, if you don't have law, that means you're saying you're above the law. You don't need law. You don't need rules from God, from Yahuwah. You don't need his rules. Well, guess what? We all do need his rules, his law, and it's a wonderful thing, not a burden whatsoever. We do not need liberty in that sense because, again, that doctrine really goes all the way back to Satan. Satan teaches, you will be as gods, is what he told us in the Garden of Eden, right? That's what he told Eve. You will be as gods. Well, if you believe you're above the law or that you don't need God's, Yahuwah's law, guess what you're really saying? You're elevating yourself to godhood status. You are no god. I am no god. We are not gods. Yet that doctrine is in the church of all places. Now, even upon announcing the Sabbath series, in fact, these trolls already started based on the keyword Sabbath, probably. They're just going and they're trolling here, trolling there, trolling here, not watching. They have no clue what we even say in the video, but... Oh, Paul this, Paul that, Paul this, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, you know, and they just keep going on and on and on and on and on. And they say nothing, 
All they do is string together fragments, and that is not a case. They're out of context. We're going to prove that in did Paul say that? Okay, so the best way to deal with those is to force everyone to read in context. See, it matters, and it doesn't say the same thing. No, not when you do that. Not really. One even made a video, too dumb for Paul. In other words, am I too dumb for Paul? Were the early church fathers too dumb for Paul? Are we all just too dumb for Paul? And it's just a satire uh, really attacking a, another YouTube ministry. But the reality is, the reality, and the guy is sincere. There's no doubt he's sincere. He means well. But his whole point is, as well, this church father, this church father, this church father, even later church fathers, they, they believed Paul in fragments said this. Well, yeah, they did. They preached that. You know what it's called? Pharisee leaven. That's what it was called 2,000 years ago, and that's what it's called now. Peter rebuked those who were doing that with Paul's words 2,000 years ago, and they're still doing it, and they've been doing it all along. So yeah, that pattern is well established. You could name one after the other after the other. But the fact is, is what you're actually doing is exposing that is someone who buys into Pharisee leaven each time. Oh, that one does. Yep, that one does. Yep, that one does. You can go down the list. This is how this doctrine was introduced into the church 2,000 years ago. It's not new. This is an old, rusty, nasty, leaven doctrine that's been leavened to such a point that it's completely incoherent when you really think about it. And again, a simple test. We will prove that. So that is coming soon. Now let's begin with... Did Paul keep the Sabbath? We start with the Acts of the Apostles. You know what they actually do. What did they practice? There are some who claim the Apostles are found keeping the Sabbath 85 times in Acts alone, in fact. We haven't counted all of them, but we do get pretty close. There's probably 85. Haven't heard that from the pulpit, though, have we? Hmm. Very rare. We will cover just some in this video, not all 85, so don't worry. But Acts 17, 2. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Okay, that's it. Video over. Paul kept the Sabbath. Done. <laughs> Period. Right? It was his custom or manner to keep the Sabbath. There you go. We saw that with Messiah as well. Same thing. His custom was to keep the Sabbath. That was his custom. So there is no arguing with the fact that they kept the Sabbath. So here's the pattern of three consecutive Sabbaths in this passage, but it is his manner, and we'll show you others. Paul kept the Sabbath, yet we are told he abolished it. Now, think about what that means, because it seems that dissenters just don't seem to think things through. If you're saying that Paul abolished the Sabbath, yet he kept it, that would make him a hypocrite. Indeed, it would if it were true. We will explore that again in What Did Paul Say? So Paul's manner or practice was to keep the Sabbath. Again, preaching on the Sabbath is not work, and it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Now, we also saw this was Messiah's custom as well. Very well established. This is the New Testament, guys. New Testament keeping the Sabbath. The early ecclesia kept the Sabbath. Acts 13. When Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga in Pamphylia, and John departed from them returning to Jerusalem. See, John had been ministering with Paul when on the Sabbath. Now, keep reading. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. Why? Well, because Paul and the apostles kept the Sabbath. 
Skip to verse 16. Then Paul stood up and beckon, beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel and ye that fear God, Yahuwah, give audience. So Paul begins his sermon. What does Paul preach, preach from? The New Testament? Well, he certainly shares some of the stories in which he was privy to, but the New Testament was not really published yet. So what is he preaching from? The Old Testament. That's what he preaches from. Paul preaches about Israel in Egypt and then in Canaan, if you read this all the way through, which we encourage you to do. He preaches about the age of the judges of Israel, King David. And then, though recorded in the New Testament, he preaches on John the Baptist, which is really, he is actually the last Old Testament prophet, really. In fact, Messiah called him the second coming of Elijah. Then he gets into Messiah's resurrection. Paul preached largely from the Old Testament, yet we are told he did away with it? Huh? Still Acts 13, verse 27, continuing. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, Yahushua, nor yet the voices of the prophets, what? He's talking about the voices of the prophets, the Old Testament. Paul, what are you doing, man? You're not allowed to do that. You don't believe the Old Testament, right? Wrong. He believes and preaches from the prophets. That's fact, folks. Which are read every Sabbath day. So this goes all the way back. They have fulfilled them in condemning him. So in other words, the words of the prophets, the warnings, are fulfilled in their condemning Yahushua, who's prophesied by the prophets, of course. So he knew what and whom. Those who are saved know him, Messiah, and the voices of the prophets as well. Yes, you need both. Wait, I thought Paul condemns the prophets and goes against them, right? No, that is nonsense. So Paul affirms Moses and the prophets kept Sabbath and read the word Torah every Sabbath day, just as Messiah continued that practice of Sabbath and as Paul and the apostles continued all the same as he is doing right here yet again. This is a pattern of keeping the Sabbath still, which defines Sabbath largely. The ancient tradition is still being practiced by Messiah and now by Paul and the apostles. This is after Messiah's resurrection and ascension to heaven. So, if Messiah said to stop keeping the Sabbath, which he never says anything close to that, but the opposite, what are the disciples doing disobeying his words? That's a massive problem that the church should be made to answer because they don't have an answer for that. They are either in rebellion or they are not. If he abolished the Sabbath, then we are not to keep it, period. And neither were they. Yet, we do not see the apostles abolishing the Sabbath, do we? No. Why? Because they kept it by a statute forever in your generations as a perpetual and everlasting covenant. They understood what those words meant, and we should too. They knew Scripture, especially the Old Testament, as that is what they preached from. Paul didn't write Paul yet. Two-thirds of the New Testament is not there. In fact, all of the writings really were not there yet. Just the stories Paul picked up from the apostles themselves. To ignore this is to ignore the entire message Of the entire word, really. The Sabbath is kept from the beginning by Enoch, Moses, Abraham, even remembered and reasserted in the law of Moses as one of the Ten Commandments, of which the other nine are still supposedly acceptable to the church, but not that one. No, not that one. Why? Because there's a scripture that abolishes it? No. So you're not following scripture then. Right. Talk about hypocritical. And that's just the fact. How does one ever justify keeping nine out of ten commandments 
based on the Bible, never telling us to stop keeping the tenth one either, but to keep it forever. How does that work? Well, this is how Satan operates, and in the church, generally at the highest levels today, unfortunately. Not all, but many, most. Let's go to verse 39 while we are here, and let's just deal with one of these right now. And by him all that believe are justified from all things. Who's him? Messiah, Yahusha. Okay? So by him we are justified from all things. Get this, all that believe. All that believe right now today, yes, but not only all that have ever believed for all time, period, because he is always salvation, not the law. Then it says, from which ye could not be justified or saved by the law of Moses. Oh, there it is. Paul is attacking the law of Moses, right? Absolutely, unequivocally wrong. Justified or really saved by whom? By Messiah. And that is the same in the Old Testament. Yes. Did the law of Moses save? Never. No one at any time. No. Who preaches that the law is salvation? Think about this. The Pharisees do. That's not a Bible principle. That's the Pharisees. Paul is condemning the Pharisees, not the Old Testament or the prophets, whom he teaches from and reaffirms. Is one saved because they keep the Sabbath? Well, we have been accused of saying that, but we never have, and no Sabbath and the law are not salvation. This Sabbath series is not a message of salvation. We don't call it salvation, and we've never said it is salvation, although it is a sign of one who believes, indeed, according to Scripture, several times. Now, they are what one who is saved keeps, according to Messiah, in John 15 especially. Also, we see it in Revelation, that we'll be keeping his commandments. What? For those who love him. For that remnant body of believers in the last days. That's what they'll be doing. Keeping his commandments. His commandments are what? Oh, there are only two. No. The two are all both found in the law of Moses, number one. So you don't abolish the law of Moses by quoting Moses. Are you kidding me? How can anyone say something like that? But it's in other places throughout Scripture. There is no doubt. Yet David and the prophets talk about salvation. In the Old Testament, what? Who is salvation? Even in the Old Testament, even early in the book of Jubilees even, there's a prophecy for salvation, only Messiah. And that was the same in the Old Testament as he has always been. It's the same in Genesis 3.15. That is a prophecy of the coming Messiah who will offer salvation. That is what it is. And that's what it's always been, never changed. There is not one Messiah in the Old Testament and then another one in the New. That's ridiculous. Just as the Old Testament God, Yahuwah, is the same as the New Testament God. He changes not. And to say so, and we've heard this from the pulpit, is absolutely unbiblical and illiterate. The Bible never says that. And Hebrews 13.8, again, Yahusha is the same. Yesterday, that means at creation, because he was then, according to John 1 and others. In the time of Moses too, by the way, today and forever, he remains the same. See, they believed the prophecies of a Messiah in the Old Testament who would save them, and they knew they would not experience death even in the Old Testament. That's right. They knew. They already knew what Messiah would do and what he represented, and there is only one such event, period, in all of history. There will be no more Messiahs, nor have ever been. But, again, he was since the beginning. So, were they waiting for him to come in the flesh? Yes. 
all were. That was highly anticipated, no doubt. But even after he came in the flesh, it is the same. When one dies, do they immediately go to heaven and all is done? They're judged and every... The Bible never says that one time. 59 times it addresses that topic. It says we go to sleep or rest, awaiting the day of final judgment. We're not judged yet. So the dead are still resting, sleeping, waiting for judgment. They haven't been judged. If you want to find the origin of that doctrine, go look at the Egyptian Book of the Dead, because that's where that doctrine originates. Osiris takes scales, weighs on the balance, your good versus your bad. If your good outweighs your bad, you go to a place similar to heaven. If your bad outweighs your good, you go to a place similar to hell. And if you're in between, you go to work out your salvation where? In purgatory. Yes, that is from the Egyptian book of the dead, not the Bible. The Bible has no such thing as purgatory. Now, they already knew what Messiah would do. They already knew what he represented. It's there many times over. Salvation and even grace are in the Old Testament. Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord, Yahuwah. Who on earth could be given more grace than Noah during the flood? Are you kidding me? You're teaching grace and you haven't taught Noah? You haven't begun to teach grace nor its foundation if you're not. Now, we'll cover that. Even the law of Moses, we will cover, is to the Gentile or stranger among you. There's many scriptures that say so. Thus, Gentiles were saved even in the Old Testament. Do they realize their salvation? Not until the day of final judgment. Can we realize our salvation today? No, not until the day of final judgment. See, Messiah's work is still in progress but he shall fulfill all. So, are we saved by the law? Never. Did we ever say that? No way. Does the Bible? Nope, it doesn't. See, these critics don't even read the Old Testament, so they have no clue what they are even talking about. That is the false paradigm created by those who oppose Scripture, because that's what they're really doing, and the Sabbath, which is Scripture. As to oppose the, scra- the Sabbath is absolutely to oppose the word. Now, we have already shown you a wealth of such scripture, and we have gone through several ways in this series already, and we have ways to go still. They can't read and represent fragments out of context, especially the words of Paul. He is not saying the law of Moses is abolished, not in this passage, nor any. He reaffirms it, so he cannot abolish that which he reasserts, can he? I mean, it just doesn't work. It makes him a hypocrite. If he did that, if that was true, and it's not, then we have to throw out everything Paul wrote. And some are trying to do that right now. We are going to redeem Paul's words. Just watch. What did Paul say? There will be. Now let's continue. What does Paul use to further this case? Well, the words of the prophets, of course. (laughs) The ones that he abandoned, right? Wrong. Now, beware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. What did the prophets say? Well, doesn't matter. They've passed away, right? I mean, Paul says they're irrelevant and impertinent today, right? Wrong. Paul never says that. He uses them as scripture, he quotes them, and he observes the same that they did by custom. So isn't that what we are told Paul believes? Yet, what does Paul say? He quotes the prophet right here. Behold ye despisers, and wander and perish, for I work a work in your days. Oh, work! No! We're not saved by work! Works! (laughs) Yeah, not reading Paul right on that one either. We'll cover it. Uh, I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. See, 
They didn't even believe the words of Yahuwah through his prophets in their days, in the days of old. But why would we expect the church of the Nephilim to keep them today? See, this is really Nephilim doctrine when you think about it. That's why I say that. I'm not calling anybody a Nephilim. But the doctrine is pretty clear. Because, see, the Nephilim hate his creation, including you and I, and they hate the creation doctrine of Sabbath above all. Established from the beginning on the seventh day of creation. That's why the other nine are okay, but not that one, no! See, the modern church has an issue with that. The modern church is not Nephilim necessarily, no, but what we're saying is that doctrine from the Nephilim has seeped in, and it has. So, how dare you rest in him for a day, right? I mean, that's what they're really saying. Well, it's heresy. It's satanic to spend a day with the creator. How dare you? <laughs> Talk about hypocrisy. Yet, it is quite foolish, isn't it, when you think about it in that sense. Paul is equating the days of the prophets and the state of man who remain thick-headed or stiff-necked, the Bible says, in rebellion, which is witchcraft. This was the same in Paul's day, and the same Pharisee movement is telling Paul, says not to keep the Sabbath today, and has for centuries now. Yet, he kept it, and never says not to, not once. Not once. It's not there, folks. Not there. Here's what he's saying. The same thick-headed nature refuses Messiah. And that's the same today. We see it all the time. That nature is not the law. No. He's not talking about people that are keeping the law. He's talking about lawbreakers. See how things get turned in the very opposite. He's not condemning the law here at all. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, notice Paul was sent to the Gentiles. Yes, he says that. Agree. But he also ministered to the Jews. Remember that. Okay. The Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Why? Because Paul kept and preached on the Sabbath as a custom and a manner according to Scripture. This is documented. And there is no arguing with it. There is no debate whatsoever. Paul kept the Sabbath. So did the apostles. If someone does something, for instance, let's say a politician uh, during this whole COVID-19 thing, right? Let's say they go to the mall and shop. And yet, the mall's closed, and no one's allowed to go to the mall. Well, how would you feel about that when they tell you, well, you can't go to the mall, but they go and they shop, right? Well, they would be hypocrites, wouldn't they? I mean, and I don't know that any has done that. I haven't heard of anything like that myself. But see, this is the same concept. If Paul kept the Sabbath, he cannot teach not to keep the Sabbath, period. There is no way to force such words out of Paul. And we'll show you they're being forced in fragments very inappropriately and completely wrong in application. You'll see. And the next Sabbath day, there we are again, came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God, Yahuwah. Whoa! Almost the whole city! Wow! Wow! When did they come? On the Sabbath. Why? Because Paul was teaching on the Sabbath. Because Paul was teaching the whole city, almost all of it, to keep the Sabbath. Hello? There are those that attempt with this. Well, Paul was only preaching on the Sabbath day, not keeping it. Really? That comes from one who doesn't even know what the Sabbath is. Paul is keeping the Sabbath here, and he's teaching others to do so as well. Reaffirming the Sabbath in the New Testament after Messiah ascended into heaven. Imagine that. It's right there. 
Fast forward to Acts 15. Are you noticing a pattern? It is quite obvious, isn't it? How come scholars can't? Well, because they're steeped in a control paradigm, as we once were. Come on, we're not here to criticize. It's time that we all awaken, my friends. Let's do so. This is James, really Jacob or Jacob, brother of Yahusha, with Paul and Barnabas. Yeah, he didn't hate Paul. He ministered with him. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Now, this is James speaking here, not Paul, but he's with Paul and same thing. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Why start there, James? Don't you know you are only supposed to preach salvation and there's nothing about the message of salvation in Genesis? Well, that would be wrong, and James knew better, because the message of salvation starts in Genesis. So, we get that all the time, by the way. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. What are they preaching? They're preaching Messiah. In the Old Testament, it's right there. Because he's all over the Old Testament, even in appearance. He appears in the Old Testament. So, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. That was done since the time of Moses. James 2, along with Paul, affirmed scripture is read in congregations every Sabbath day, or Saturday, by the way, not Sunday, from the time of Moses and even from creation, which he just talked about. See, these guys knew everything that we're teaching in the series. They knew it well, and they affirm it. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. Paul's training. He was an apostle. Namely, Judas, surnamed Barsabbas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. What the other apostles were pleased with, they were pleased with Paul. They acknowledged he was an apostle. So, indeed, they were. He was an apostle. So, if we're talking about throwing out Paul's words, there's a problem with that. If we're talking about Paul going against the rest of Scripture, there's a problem with that. It doesn't work. Therefore, there must be a well a way to reconcile the words of Paul, and there is, we will show you. What did Paul say? Watch it. Let's go to Acts 16. Again, this is Paul. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside, where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spoke unto the woman which resorted thither. What did they do on the Sabbath? Well, they also had prayer gatherings by the river. Awesome. We should all consider this as well. You don't just have to stay home. Congregation is good, but you do it in his presence, in him. Ecclesia happened especially on Sabbath, Saturday. How about Acts 18? This is Paul in Corinth, the Corinthians. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheus, Timothy, were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus, Yahushua, was Christ, Mashiach, Messiah. So when did he do this? On the Sabbath, yet again, every Sabbath. And yes, Paul preached to Jews, here we are again as well, though his calling was definitely to the Gentiles, no doubting that, but he preached to both. Therefore, there is no parsing Paul's words as saying, well, you know, Paul was talking to Gentiles here. He was talking to Jews here. He's one thing here. He's another thing here. No. 
Paul has to be consistent with the word because the word doesn't change. There's not one gospel for Gentiles and another gospel for Jews. It doesn't work that way. So we'll break that down in what did Paul say? Paul and the apostles kept the Sabbath, even after Messiah ascended. So either they were disobedient, which cannot be the case, or they were doing exactly what Messiah ordered, because he never abolished his Sabbath. We've proven that. He is Lord of the Sabbath. He made the Sabbath, and he did so for us, for man, for mankind. After Acts The word Sabbath is actually only mentioned one more time by name in Scripture. But the concept is there, such as in Hebrews 4, verses 9 through 11, which we covered, I believe, in the very first part, if not the second. Somehow, that one time, though, which we will deal with in context, not as a fragment. In what did Paul say? Paul mentions that the Pharisees are persecuting the ecclesia, beating them over the head with Pharisee law. That's a manipulation of Torah, not Yahusha's commandments, nor Yahuwah's, which are the same thing they have to be. But against them, according to Mark 7, 7, 7-9 especially, just as they did Messiah and the disciples, before, which we covered. They did the same thing to them. They accused the disciples of breaking the Sabbath. They did not. They accused Messiah of breaking the Sabbath. He did not. They broke the Pharisee interpretation of Sabbath, which is against his commandments. There's a massive distinction there, and that matters. How can anyone forget it is Pharisees who persecute for breaking their false law? Because that's what scripture says over and over and over. The ones that render the word of none effect, it says in Mark 7. We will cover Colossians 2 in detail in one of the next videos. In, did Paul say that, right? Or what did Paul say? Yet another scripture far out of context in the modern church to cover up the Sabbath and the law that Messiah said he did not come to abolish. So he abolished it? Okay. No. We are to keep it. Paul kept it and loved it and said he loved it, in fact. Those are his words more than once. He said the law is good and holy. I mean, how many times did Paul need to say those kinds of things for us to understand that just maybe the context cannot be accurate on some of the other quotes? Yet we are to believe he did away with and condemned the law which he kept and preached. Doesn't work. He most certainly never did, nor did Paul ever say such, nor did he ever have authority to abolish the law. Nor did Peter. Another video coming in our new Doctrines of Men Resolve series. I believe actually we just launched that already, so that one's out. We are going to move forward in this series beyond Paul, and we'll go ahead and start to discuss the Sabbath in the end times. That's next. What? Yeah. We are told it passed away, but... We find it in Scripture, even in the end times, even. Don't miss it. Thank you for watching our Sabbath series. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell. Like us on our Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space, original. Share this video with others and check out our website at thegodculture.com. Always remember to prove all things for yourself. We love you all. Yahuwah bless and Shabbat Shalom or Sabbath peace if you are watching this on the Sabbath.